When we talk about reminders, we talk about grand things. When we talk about advice, I believe in talking about advice from a very practical, even minimalist point of view. Things that you can practically do, and that's why I don't like to share much personally, even though I read them for myself for inspiration. I don't like to share stories of the Tabi'un and the, and the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet who prayed the entire night, or recited the whole Quran in a week, or made dua and then it started raining. Those stories, I don't share them. You know why? Because you know what happens to most of you when you hear that? Man, they were so awesome. I'm so bad. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> that's, the, that's the end of the. <laughs> Man, Sahaba were really cool. I am so going to hell. That's it. That's it. Let's start little by little. The Arabs have a saying, it says, it's in many other cultures too. The first of the heavy rain is just a drop, then it pours, right? Let it build little by little. The first thing you got to do is you have to discipline your life, people. I have to do it, you have to do it. You know what it means to discipline your life? Go to sleep early. Pray Isha and go to sleep. Don't go to the hookah joint until 12.30 a.m. Don't go see a movie. Don't go hang out with your friends. Don't watch Islamic lectures until 2 in the morning. Do not. It is not beneficial for you. Pray Isha and go to sleep and wake up early. Wake up before Fajr. Give yourself 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I know it seems impossible. It's only impossible because of Netflix at night. Okay? That's the only reason it's impossible. Give the night life up. Let the night be for sleep. At least you're not accumulating sin every night. At least you're not burying your heart under more sin every night. At least you're sleeping. At least you're innocent for that much. At least that much. Then you wake up and you pray. At least start with the routine of praying Fajr on time. Start with Fajr. And the guys here, at least, at least once a week, guys, make it to the masjid for Fajr. At least one. I don't ask you every day. Just one day a week. Give yourselves one day a week. And you don't catch the second rakah right before the salam. Right? And then after you finish making it up, you're like, oh, masjid today. That's right. <laughs> you're like pointing at the right hand. You wrote that down? You got that? You got that? Fajr? You're like, yeah, that. <laughs> Get to the masjid early. Let me tell you something about Fajr in the masjid. It has a spiritual impact that only people who go to it will experience. It can't be explained in a lecture. When you go to it, when you go to the prayer, and you sit there in the masjid quietly, and you wait for the prayer to start, and you sit there and you recite Quran, and you ask Allah to forgive you in those morning hours, and then you stand next to other believers and countless armies of angels, and you stand and you pray in front of Allah in that early morning giving up your sleep, which only happened because you gave up your nightlife. When you do that, even once a week, the joy you will get out of it, you will, as you are walking out of the masjid, you will wish to yourself you did that every morning. I swear to it. I guarantee it. You're going to walk out of that masjid saying, man, I wish I could do this every morning. You really will. But start with once a week. Start with once a week. Don't make Friday night party night. You just came out of Salatul Jumu'ah. That's why the shayateen do extra heavy advertising for Friday night. That's why movies come out on Friday nights. Because they know they have to ruin one-fifth of the world's population's ibadah. They just went to Jumu'ah. How can we undo Jumu'ah? Well, there's a new movie premiere. Right? That same night. Let's get it all, all done with before its effects carry over even the weekend. <laughs> right? Make Fridays a good time. You know? Let, let that be a good time.